Greetings everyone, Brian Benz here. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'm here to talk to you about deploying Jakarta EE applications to WebSphere Liberty and or Open Liberty on Azure Kubernetes Service, also known as AKS. I'm gonna be covering the highlights of the Learn module that you see on your screen. The Learn module itself can be found at aka.ms slash liberty to AKS. That's all letters, liberty to AKS. All right, so let's get started on that. The first thing I wanna show you is actually the end result. So when you've actually finished the learn module, you will have an application that looks like this. It's Duke's Cafe, it's a basic CRUD app. You can read, update, and you can delete. So pretty simple. This is the one running on my local machine. I'm gonna show you how to run on the local machine and then run it on Kubernetes as well. So back to the learn module. The first thing you have to do is set up some prerequisites specifically make sure that you've got the latest Azure CLI. You're going to need Maven and Docker as well. And then you create a deployment using the portal. So the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, is where you do that. If you have an account already, you're probably familiar with that uh, site. But if you don't, you can actually go to portal.azure.com and get a free trial. This is what the portal looks like when you're finished. Uh, you won't have my links over here, but you will have a resource group that looks something like this. And to get started, what you need to do is you need to actually deploy a marketplace image. So let's search for Liberty. If I go to the marketplace images, you'll see we have a IBM WebSphere Liberty and Open Liberty on Azure Kubernetes service uh, marketplace image that you can use for this. Now the marketplace image has been created in conjunction with IBM and it also uses something called the Open Liberty Operator, which is something that IBM created to enable running a Jakarta EE application on Kubernetes, and in this case, Azure Kubernetes Service. And it also helps with diagnostics and a few other things as well. And we'll go into more details of that later, but I just want to mention that. So you create from here and you're going to choose a resource group. I already have one called Hello Liberty. There it is. Uh, and we're going to use East US 2 as our region. We're going to try and use that for everything today. You just leave most of this at the defaults, the Kubernetes cluster, VM size, the node counts, and the container registry. You're going to want to do all of that. We're going to create a new Azure Container Registry for storing the data. Next thing that's going to happen is you're going to connect to an Azure Application Gateway. You're going to want to create a virtual network and you can have a self-signed certificate for a demo application, but otherwise you'd probably want to bring your own perhaps or set up a more secure option. Uh, enable cookie based affinity basically sets up sticky sessions in case you have multiple users accessing the application. This is where you choose between the Open Liberty instance and the WebSphere Liberty instance. I'm going to go with the default, which is Open Liberty. That means no, meaning it's not IBM supported. If I click yes, that's the WebSphere Liberty. Uh, and deploy an application, no. We're going to deploy an application separately, so we don't need the sample application, which is just a really basic application that shows you some statistics about your deployment. Next, we do a re review and create. And once you do that, uh, you can just review all the settings and hit create. Now, I've already pre-created something because this takes sometimes up to 20, 30 minutes to actually generate a new instance. Next thing I wanted to show you actually was what's actually set up in this application. So in this part of the application, it's actually going to set up a container registry, a Kubernetes service, an application gateway, and that application gateway is going to be accessible through a public IP address. There's a virtual network that ties everything together. There's also, as a second step, a database that you need to set up. In this case, we're using an Azure SQL database or Azure SQL Server. It has a couple of SQL databases that we're using here for storing data. This is, by the way, it's, if you go into the portal and you go to any resource group and you say resource visualizer, it shows you this. That's in a nutshell what we're deploying here. Uh, the next step 
is actually capturing some information from the deployment. What you want to do there is you want to go into your resource group. In this case, this is my resource group, Liberty to AKS, that I've already pre-created. You want to go to Deployments, and then you want to go down to the last one here. I won't click on it because it's going to show me a bunch of information, but you want to collect some information that is in this deployment item. The two things you want to connect, uh, collect are the command connect to cluster and app deployment template YAML. And what this does, if you use the app deployment template YAML, uh, you do a search here in a bash shell and it's going to give you a secret name. This is a way of parameterizing your application so it's unique and you don't have any hard coded values in there that could make your application less secure. Next up, we create an Azure SQL database. I showed you the diagram with the database itself. Basically, you just go through, you look for uh, Azure SQL, you choose the single database, and there's only two settings or three settings you need to make sure you set. The connectivity method should be public endpoint, and you should allow Azure services and resources to access this server. In this case, AKS is your Azure service that's going to access that. And then you have add current client IP address. The client IP address itself is going to take my local laptop IP address and send it out to the server firewall for me so that I can access the database from my local machine. Just use TLS for the application here, uh, as we did with AKS simple and easy to connect. Uh, and then the next thing we do is we actually just generate and deploy that database, which I've already done. After that, you want to configure and deploy the sample application. So the sample application is actually at Azure Samples Open Liberty on AKS. It's the application I showed you, it's a CRUD application, uh, and we're using the option that connects it to SQL Server. So in order to do that, it's actually pretty simple to set up. The first thing you do, uh, there's a number of environment variables you need to set up. Uh, save these in a local file uh, and then use them to export. Uh, if you're doing this more than once, I would highly recommend that. Uh, you got your login server, registry name, and that's for the container registry. And then the server name for your database, the username, uh, the password that you've got for your database as well. And then that ingress TLS secret that we got as part of grab that resource deployment information and grabbing the uh, secret name that you need. The next thing you can do is test the project locally. So clone the repo over to your local machine uh, and then change the, C uh, change the directory to Java app, Maven Liberty run. And that runs... When it runs, I've got something here. Let me show you in Visual Studio Code. Over here in Visual Studio Code, you'll see when the actual application runs, uh, you do the CD Java app, Maven Clean Install, Maven Liberty Run, and you can open this at localhost 9080, or a uh, little tip here, when this deploys, you'll see something that says web application available default host, and when you click on that, it'll actually ask you if you want to open that external site and it opens the site for you. So uh, instead of having to use your local host, which sometimes has, maybe you're using Docker or something, you have local contentions, this is a handy way to do this. It actually generates a little local IP address for you. So when you're finished actually running the application locally, um, the next thing you want to do is build an image for AKS, and that's a Docker image that you're going to create. If you're using Open Liberty, and this, as I am, Docker build, and you want to call it Java E Cafe V1, and the file will be the Docker file. And then there's a WebSphere Liberty version of this as well that you can use. It's a separate Docker file in that sample if you're using WebSphere Liberty. Then you can test it locally. You can say Docker run, and you have to pass the database name this time. Those aren't set up in the environment variables. You just pass them using the E command. And then once the container starts, go to localhost 9080, and you'll be able to view that as well. Next thing we want to do is we want to pass that created Docker image to our container registry. The container registry itself will upload the image using these commands, 
Docker tag, you set up a tag for it so it knows where to find it in the registry. Then you say Docker login, you log into the server and you do Docker push. At the end of that, you will have something that looks like this. Inside the container registry, repositories, Java EE Cafe. So you've got an image there, version one, ready to go. And that image is ready to deploy to AKS. So the next thing you want to do is set up a couple of items in your AKS cluster. The first thing you want to do is set up a secret. So that's that secret that we generated earlier to connect between Azure services. Kube control apply secret YAML. And then there's a Kube control apply open liberty application agic. YAML as well. AGIC stands for Application Gateway Ingress Control. Let's go to the repo. The repo itself, if I go into Java App Source Main AKS, first thing you see is a secret. So the secret is where you pass that value so you don't parameterize things. Once again, it makes the application more secure. So you're passing local environment variables into Kubernetes and setting them up here. In this case, the server name, the user and password are all passed securely to Kubernetes and then they're hashed in Kubernetes uh, when they get there. So it's a secure passage and a secure storage of your Kubernetes credentials for uh, connections to other Azure services. The next thing is the Open Liberty uh, Application Gateway Ingress Control Resource Definition. So this is a custom resource definition and this is where the WebSphere or the Open Liberty operator comes into play. As you can see here from the uh, kind of deployment, it's an Open Liberty application, so it's a custom resource definition. And it is using the environment variables that we just set up to pass and connect to the database. And then it runs the application and it runs it on port 9080. So once that's done and the deployment is successful, I'm gonna switch over to Visual Studio Code again. I can open up WSL and I can say Kube control get pods and I can see that they're running and then I can say Kube control get ingress and you can see the address here so I can copy this address and I can open it actually in a browser which I've already done right here. All right so that covers the highlights of the learn module that I'm showing you here deploy Java Jakarta EE application uh, to open Liberty or WebSphere Liberty on Azure Kubernetes service. And the short link to this learn module is aka ms slash liberty to aks. All letters T O A K S. You can also go to aka ms slash java slash ee to find out more information about. Jakarta EE and Java EE topics in general, and also MicroProfile. Uh, and that includes this Learn module as a link in there right here. All right, my name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and thanks for your time today.